wanted a rural property and then we wanted a farm and all the stars just kind of aligned to bring us to this place. I have learned all of the environmental reasons that we should be eating organic, 100% grass-fed, all of those keywords. But it wasn't until we had children that we really put our you know, words to actions. So we bought the farm, it was the end of 2009. We had zero farming experience. We didn't know at all what we were doing. So we kind of let the place dictate to us what it wanted to be. And it told me that what it wanted was to be perennial because it's such steep slopes and we really love the cattle and we love the sheep. We were debating between two different breeds actually. And we were at La Trois, uh, the restaurant in Madison. And my husband, Andy, had the best steak he's ever had in his whole life. And on the menu, it said that it was a British White Park steak. So that was the British White Park, but it was the La Trois steak that really put us over the top to pick them. We are about a 160-acre farm. We are certified naturally grown. Our beef and our lambs are 100% grass-fed. Our pigs are all raised out on pasture, eating the wild things that want to grow here. We have wild hazelnuts, elderberries, plums, mulberries, you name it. The pigs absolutely love it. And it's how they want to be. So everybody is really happy and healthy and everything is just working together is just really great ecosystem. Everybody's benefiting everybody. So right now we're in um, one of the feeder pigs pastures. We rotate them every two to three weeks and we give them a big enough area that they're not going to completely denude it of vegetation but they'll still be able to have access to all the roots and shoots and herbs and mushrooms <laughs> and everything else good and delicious that grows here. We got three feeder pigs from some guy on Craigslist. We didn't know a single soul in the area when we moved here because we're actually from the east side of the state. And then I said, well, if I have to be out there working for three, we might as well work for way more than that, I guess. And then I said, well, I have all these customers that want to buy pork and stuff now, so maybe we could do 30? How's that sound? Is that a good idea? And back and forth and back and forth it went. So it turns out that marketing and farmer's market and dealing with the general public is basically a full-time job. And so one of the best ways to move a lot of meat is restaurants. The trickiest part is finding a restaurant that doesn't want only pork tenderloins because then I have 90% of the pig left to deal with and move. So we were so fortunate to be able to start working with the Informalist and with the Lakely and Eau Claire because they have chefs that know that that's what we need. And it's actually a really funny story how we even met like Chef Amy from The Informalist. She actually was an intern on our farm three or four years ago before she even knew that she wanted to be a chef. And so she kind of went into this restaurant world then knowing how best she could help small farmers like us that are trying to get off the ground. And so it's really been perfect working with these restaurants. So today we are delivering Chef Amy some pork chops, some pork bellies, pork roast, and some lard. Hey! Hi! How are you doing? Got your pork chops. Fabulous. You want to walk right in there? You got bellies in there? I do. To the chagrin of all of my other customers who don't get the bacon now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really am. I really am. Oh, perfect. Sorry, not great. sorry. A nice fat cap on that one. Ooh, these so, look really what are you good. gonna do with them? Do you know? You know, I was thinking we have some apples, and I got some crab apples from one of our farmers. A I brand see. new orchard that opened up. I think uh, maybe a pork and apple thing would be good. Uh, cool. All right, thank, thank you. you. Keep doing great things. Yeah, <laughs> you keep doing great things. So the Informalist was open in May of 2016. We focus on local, sustainable ingredients. There are a lot of different influences, but for the most part, I don't stick to one particular style only because it puts me in kind of a box that I can't get out of. I like to look at what I can get 
and then create the menu out of it. So there isn't one style, it's just whatever we have in the cooler, wherever the inspiration comes from, you know, we just kind of have to go with the flow and see where it takes us. If the phrase in American dining that there is great food everywhere is true, well then it's never been more true than here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I'm here to meet the chef at The Informalist who, after leaving this town, came back and ran headlong into a farmer that was rediscovering animal husbandry and permaculture and how to grow great authentic food. The two of them and their combined talents are helping to recreate what Eau Claire means within the pantheon of Wisconsin dining and the flavors of the Midwest. Chef Amy To. Hey. How are you? Good. How do are you? Do we do you? the chef shake or yeah. we can do a real one? We'll do a real one. Nice come here, come in for a hot bud. Nice to meet you. I've heard Wonderful a lot about you. Oh. You're wearing tuxedo black though and this is called the informalist. Should I have dressed up? No. No? You don't have to. All right. What do the you mean? The great make? part about this place is that you can come any way you are and you're fine. Be as you are. You should you. be really comfortable here. So I feel the... I feel comfortable. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. What are you making? Oh, I made some donuts. Uh, you want to <laughs> try one? Speaking of comfort. <laughs> yeah, so. These look like root vegetables with some sort of, uh, I don't know, what is this? Some, some sort of dust of some sort. Right, so in the restaurant we like to preserve a lot of stuff. So you can see this is from the 18th actually. Um, this is sweet corn. It's really naturally, obviously sweet. Oh, can I do like a little fingertip? Absolutely. Yeah? So it's not like sugary cloying on your palate, but it's oh, a little bit really sweet. Oh, that's really cool. So it's got a lot of, this, this is uh, what I used to garnish the donuts with. So. This is carrot puree, and mm -hmm. I used a pot of choux dough, which is like profiterole or cream puff or whatever. Right, right the light fluffy kind of thing, little right. air gets in there. Yep, and then I deep fried it and put some sorghum syrup and then some of the sweet corn on it. Sweet we're corn in Wisconsin after all, so let's because why deep not? fry it. Can I just have a, make it happen? Just, just get right in there. Look at, see, look at the color. Check that out. That, that's where it's at right there. It's like curry yellow. Mm -hmm. So it's really orange carrots that we get from our farmers and it's mm -hmm. like really sweet. It's awesome. I could go for a cup of coffee and some bad decisions on a Sunday morning with this. So are you catching up to the food that people have always eaten in and around this region and just making a little bit more refined or are you hmm. echoing off of the things that they knew from their childhood or are you introducing new stuff? It's everything that you've seen before but not in a way you've seen it like these are sweet and salty and a little bit bitter these are a perfect example because this is right. not your typical donut right right so it's kind of things that you would recognize normally but you don't you don't expect them to be in this way is this endemic of uh, your other uh, dishes and that you're secretly a health food cook no absolutely not. butter <laughs> and all the things i want to get that out of the way <laughs> right away Julia no, no, Child no. is smiling down at us. Yeah, she yeah. should be. Uh-huh. So you're part of this chapter of the revitalization and the renaissance of Eau Claire. Mm -hmm. Well, really the opening, the prelude were these delicious <laughs> carrot donuts. <laughs> right. So I want to see where you take the story. I'm going to go sit in your dining room. Sounds good. Which is where I do some of my best work eating. Yeah. And I'm going to get out well, of your space where I hear you do some of your best work, the kitchen. Arguably, you'll have to tell me what. If yeah, I see you out there. Cool. My goodness, chef, this is uh, a few light bites. Yeah. I'm loving just, the color. I thought you would want to try a little bit of everything that we get from Steph. So okay. this is your pork chop. And then over here we have some offal toast, which is some tongue, liver, kidney. Yeah. I know. You are so, speaking my language There's and food. There's a little bit of kohlrabi, sauerkraut, double cream and mm -hmm. then some pickled cheddar cauliflower. So that's a uh, sourdough that our baker makes in house. It's mm -hmm. a Pullman. This is so good. Hey, you don't have to fake it. It's all right. No, this is <laughs> really good. All right, so this is our pork chop from Stephanie. What is this? So this is a black currant sauce. Okay. Um, I like to incorporate a lot of permaculture things in the kitchen. So, and also because you and your husband have a permaculture 60 acre farm. Yes, so Correct. we are raising some of this stuff on our own. So not only are you cooking the dream, you're living the dream. Some of it. 
<laughs> I do my best. I, do I my mean, best. That, that phrase gets thrown around way too much, but you're, you've got a permaculture farm, you're sourcing from all these farmers that you look in the eye and you know their ingredients, right. and, then, and then you're preparing food. I think it's really important to understand the process. So I don't just buy the things, I understand how they were grown. Right. I'm intrigued and I'm gonna just delicately slide this pork chop over and ruin your gorgeous plating to expose masa dumplings. Mm -hmm. So you Always. took masa, which is basically alkalized corn, mm -hmm. so that the skin comes off mm -hmm. and you get that wonderful thing on the inside. Smash it up, yep. turn it into a dough you can turn into a dumpling. And you said, oh, I'll just pair that with pork chops? Yeah. Which is ingenious, because those flavors will work so well. Well, we'll see. I'm still working on this one well, and I want... See, it's falling apart. It is falling is... apart from goodness, as my grandmother would say. <laughs> It smells great. With the current, it's really good, I think. You know what it smells like? It smells like sweet corn plus toast right out of the toaster yeah. plus grape jelly. Ooh, not something I thought of. Mmm. I think it turned out pretty well. Dude. <laughs> nice sear marks on the pork chop, by the way, chef. Mmm, that was my sous chef. He gets the credit. Okay. That's really yummy. The buttery mm -hmm. fat. That's what well, does it. The pork chop, I don't mess around with. There's a little much. bite here. I mean, I'll. Come on. Wow, that actually turned out really well. I'm always surprised when I do something right. I love that face. <laughs> I love that face on chefs when they they experiment in the kitchen and they pull it together in this composed dish. And folks like me try it, and we're amazed, but we're not amazed like you're amazed because you know everything it took to get there. Yeah. You're like, wow, I risked it and I pulled it off. Wow, man. Pulling together dishes like this, you spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I know there isn't just the yellow pages of local farms you can flip open. Right. So how do you even manage those relationships? It's a lot of work. So I've known Stephanie for a long time. I called her when I moved back from Delaware and I said I want to get into learning about sustainable farming and all this stuff. Did it make you a better chef? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I think so. I think if I hadn't started there, I wouldn't have the understanding of what it takes to get to this point. So, Every chef that I know that spent a significant amount of time around farmers, and I mean on a farm, working the farmers markets the way that you did, have such a different perspective on the ingredients. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's informalism, I'll take it. <laughs> if that's so casual you get it right, like, yeah, sign me up for that. You can't, casual doesn't mean you don't care. Casual just means that you're comfortable. And civility is not a sign of weakness. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. This is Thank delicious. You, We're glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you guys could make it. Well, there's good food everywhere. There's extra good food here in Eau Claire. <laughs> I am driving what seems like the boundless countryside, but it's really just a few clicks outside of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And I'm going to Together Farms, and it's what everybody loves, it's burger night. Stephanie! Kyle! How are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you, thank you for coming. Together Farms! Burger night. So I've been to many farms, Stephanie, and this is unlike any farm I have ever seen. There's a slanted chicken coop, People are playing games. There's a klezmer band. There are cows, and I mean, like, give me the, give me the 360. <laughs> so Burger Night started in 2017. I thought, well, we have all this meat. We have a beautiful space. We wanted to bring people out to the farm. Why don't we make burgers, right? And so it's way easier for me to bring 200 people out to a burger night than for me to go out and find 200 people to try my burger. Because once you've tried 100% grass-fed beef and you've had it cooked well, and you've been to the farm that raised it, and you can see the animals, and you can meet the farmers, it just totally changes your whole perspective on things. There are quite a few other farms that do on-farm events, something similar, but most of them are vegetable farms. Right. So, and I think I know why. Because uh, most livestock farms, they want to be with their livestock, mm -hmm. and that's why they do livestock. They don't want to be with people. Whereas I'm kind of the opposite. 
So, I want to be so, with people. So you're an extroverted <laughs> introvert in the livestock, in the organic livestock racket. I love Perhaps it. Perhaps my husband's the introvert side and okay. I'm the extrovert. I'm marrying the two it worlds together. Yeah. So this is an expression of your personalities in the community. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Chef Amy. Hey man, what's up? How are you? Great, how are you? Good. You, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, I decided I'd take a night off. See where the ingredients come from? Yeah, always. Life Love from hanging the farm. out here. Yeah, man. Yeah. What a gorgeous night. We've got your friends. We have this fantastic band. Yeah. Is it a grand relief to see um, a grill going and people being served and thinking, I have none of those worries tonight? That's exactly how it is, yeah. actually. I think all of my all of my people would agree. Yeah, so yes. it's a true night off for everybody. Yes. Cool. Well, cheers to uh, good organic ingredients out here at the edge of the driftlet. Cheers to that. So, oh, hello, hello Chef. Hello, how are you how doing? How are you? Perfect, how nice are you doing? Nice to meet you, good. Stephanie, nice <laughs> to see you again, too. So, you are the burger guy today. That's the rumor. Yeah, give me your background. Well, I've been cooking for about 22 years now professionally. That might date me a little bit, but uh -huh. uh, uh, this is my summer of fun. That's, I love it. It's zen here, yeah. to be honest. It's really neat to be able to sit here and cook something that I can see right where it came from, which is actually they moved over there. And Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you got to look them in the eye just to let them know uh, what you're capable of doing. That's right. That's a little surreal, but okay. <laughs> so, you've got a beautiful menu that I passed of mm -hmm. burgers. Give me top three and then the one that I must have, and if you would be so kind, sir. Top three burgers that we have here yeah. are the Good Fat Burger, which is just <laughs> fat on fat on fat. It's, okay. Uh, it's avocado, it's uh, bacon, uh, and our bacon fat aioli, which is also wonderful. Fat on fat on fat. Okay. I think that would be, that would give me the high pro glow that I've been looking for this summer. So one of those, if I were going to follow it up, what do you complete that cycle with? Well, we would do cheese curds. Okay. Of course. And there's something special about, not the curds, but, but what the, we put the curds in. Yeah, I heard a rumor. Pork fat. Oh yeah. I, you've got gloves. Let's just a high elbow. To high that. elbow. Beautiful. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta yes. stay sanitary. You're a on true top culinarian. Of this, yeah. We also are featuring a drunk Hawaiian. Yeah, that sounds really good. That beer onions. Really good. They're onions caramelized in beer. Okay. We're sure. using Paps beer because I'm from Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm gonna need one of each because I love a Hawaiian let's, let's pizza. Let's do it. I could, I could do a slider special for you. We can, we can run one of each. My man. My man. So I'm going for the, uh, what is it called? All fat? Fat on fat on fat? Great fat? <laughs> grand fat? Good fat? All good fat. All good fat? All good fat. Okay, this yeah. is like, I could probably do this in one it. bite. Nice char on the bun, I gotta say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's our number one seller. Dude. Now, you are super special, so you got sliders. I'm super special because this is so, del like, I've eaten a lot of burgers in my life. This is a million dollar seller. Thank you. I mean, people wax poetic about grass fed from the vitamin standpoint, the health aspects. Right. The omega 3s, omega 6s, yeah, Thank exactly. You. But then there's the flavor. Right. And the burger can either be one of the worst experiences and expressions of beef flavor or one of the most terrific. And you are this, this one. I like, I just want to get up and leave after this. My day can't get any better. So the drunken Hawaiian, this I am so excited about. This is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. well, if you weren't here and I weren't on camera, I yes. would just keep eating this <laughs> and I would look like cooking my, it would just be a thing. Well, that's they, why we all have drips on our shirts. You know, the fat, walking, doing things. I, I, I get it. I get it. I mean... Your beef grind is really sublime. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you have a story, and I get why the restaurants want your ingredients. Will you join me in a okay. curd? Let's cheers to you. Cheers. To Together Farms. Oh, thank you. Yes. To uh, permaculture, to great organic farming, to delicious burgers, to a gorgeous Wisconsin day, and Anything. to cheese curds that are fried 
in pork fat.